Let's say we have an object. It's on a level surface. I know it doesn't look level, but I, I can't draw it. The force applied on this object is 45 newtons. Let's say the coefficient of kinetic friction between the surface and this object is 0.15. It's moving at a constant velocity of 4.5 meters per second to the right. And we're trying to figure out the mass of the object. So if we look at our free body diagram, the force applied is to the right. The force of gravity is straight down. The force of kinetic friction is to the left. And the force normal is up. So clearly we have friction, so that we know the work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy. Work due to the friction is the force of kinetic friction times delta R times the cosine of theta, mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial. If we set our zero line at the center of mass of the object, it starts and ends with zero gravitational potential energy. It's moving at a constant velocity, so we have kinetic energy final. Uh, we have no spring, but the kinetic energy final, kinetic energy initial, that's actually going to be equal to zero because the kinetic energy final and the kinetic energy initial are both zero. Therefore, the force of kinetic friction times delta R times the cosine of theta, um, the force of friction and the displacement are going to be in the opposite direction. Therefore, the force of kinetic friction times delta R times cosine of 180 equals zero. Therefore, the negative force of kinetic friction times the delta R equals zero. Therefore, we have no friction and no displacement, and it doesn't work. And I want to know what's wrong with what I just said. This is something I see often from students when we do problems. So I have recreated it here because there is something wrong with what I've done, and you need to understand what it is. Nitish. There's a force apply. Remember, the work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy is only applicable when there's a force applied. In this problem, there's a force applied. You can see that it did not work, right? That doesn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do now, Nick, is we're going to go through and describe when you can use these various equations to make sure people understand which ones you can use when and why. Okay, let's start with this equation. Net work equals the change in kinetic energy. We derived this equation in class. We simply took the, uh, the equation for work, used net work for it, and derived the equation for this. Now, we gave no preconditions for this to work. So this equation is always true. The other equations we need to walk through. We started with the change in energy of the system is equal to the energy transferred into or out of the system. On the left hand side, the change in energy of the system is the change in mechanical energy of the system plus the change in internal energy of the system. And the work, the energy transferred into or out of the system is the work done by the force applied. It's the force applied that does that work. <coughs> One thing that you should remember is the change in internal energy of the system is the negative of the work done by friction. So at this point, if there is no force applied, the work done by the force applied equals zero, and the change in mechanical energy minus the work due to friction equals zero, and the work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy. So while the net work equals the change in kinetic energy is always true, the work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy is only true when there's no force applied. And yes, these two equations often get confused with one another. So please be careful to notice the difference, we have the net work equals the change in kinetic energy, and the work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy. Two very different equations. You can only use them under certain circumstances. Okay, what if there is no force of friction? Well, then the work due to friction equals zero, and we have zero equals the change in mechanical energy, or zero equals mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial. So mechanical energy final equals mechanical energy initial conservation 
of energy. Again, network equals change of kinetic energy is always true. Work due to friction equals change of mechanical energy you can use when there's no force applied. And the conservation of energy, you need to have no force applied and no force of friction. I'm still a little confused why like our first equation didn't work. Like why Okay, why coming back to here, like we get it. Do you agree this doesn't make any sense? Yeah. Right. I just That's fine. Yeah. So who can explain to him again that's it's important to understand why this didn't work? Jenkins. Um when you derive a work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy, you have to assume the force applied equals zero. And the force applied doesn't equal zero. Right? Uh, so because there is a force applied, this equation is not valid, and we've shown that that's not valid. So what could you use to solve it? The way you would solve this is using the, the network equal to change in kinetic energy. Oh, okay. Because there's both friction and a force applied, so if you, you have to use that one. Right. Well, the network, you, you have to take, uh, you have to use every force that. Correct. So if we were to talk about this one, we would, the, we would do the work done by the force normal, the work done by the force applied, the work done by the force of gravity, and the work done by the force of, kinetic, the force of kinetic friction. These two would end up being zero, and what you get is that the work done by the force applied plus the work due to the force of kinetic friction is equal to zero because the change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. Right? But the work done by the force of kinetic friction is negative, the work done by the force applied is positive. <coughs> so work by FKF would equal force applied, right? The work by force applied. In the end, um, you would have, well, this one plus this one would equal to zero. So the work done. So the net work would equal the change in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. This would be the work done by the force of kinetic friction plus the work done by the force applied. So the work done by the force applied would equal the negative of the work done by the force of kinetic friction. But the work done by the force of kinetic friction is force of kinetic friction times the displacement times a cosine of 180. So this would be the force applied times the delta R times a cosine of zero. 